What's up, guys? So UFC 301 has just ended. And I know everyone's going crazy about Steve Ersegg robbery, Steve Ersegg robbery, and everything like that. But there's a lot more to this card. There's so much to this card. Weirdly, a card that was extremely mid, like going into it, I was hyped and stuff. But obviously, there's going to be fans who are hyped. But it was not a card that was like stacked or anything like that. Not like a great card with all this name value and star power, but it really delivered in my personal opinion. Man, that card was unbelievable. But let's get to what everyone wants to talk about. Timestamps will be pinned in the comments below for my reaction to any particular fight that you guys want to hear me talk about. There is a lot to talk about, so let's get right into this. Let's get in right to the important stuff. Let's start with this first, I guess almost a perfect card for me i got i believe 12 out of 13 fights right obviously anthony smith shows up on paper this time um and that's the one fight i get wrong but no shout out to anthony smith actually a win where you know most people doubted him and he actually went out there and got a first round finish win over one of the best prospects in the light heavyweight division in vitor petrino so but let's get into alexandre pantoja versus steve ersegg so comment below what you guys think about this. I know everyone, I checked social media, everyone's saying robbery. Um, I picked Pantoja, I did a fight breakdown for this fight. Um, one of the things that I really like to do after like a pay-per-view event and after, you know, I can look back at those fight breakdowns and notice a lot of the things that I did well. You know, some of the points that I made and how well they aged. And I do think I had a pretty good feel for this fight going into it. I ended up picking Alexandre Pantoja, but I did think that Steve Ersegg was going to be a significant challenge. And boy, was he. A lot of people thought he won. A lot of the things, the reason why I brought up that breakdown, a lot of the things that I said did age quite well. So I'm pretty happy. I'm usually in a good mood. And uh, yeah, so Alexandre Pantoja was having good success with the blitz in this fight. Urseg, when the fight was a lot more slower paced, was having more success with his striking. And I think that's kind of the story of the fight. Uh, Well-rounded MMA styles from both. And the scrambling is a massive part to this fight. So you guys are probably wondering, how did I score the fight? So when I make picks, I'm a bit obsessive with the pick and things like that in moments. So I can't lie. I'm 100% biased. I picked Alexandre Pantoja. I was rooting for Alexandre Pantoja to win for that reason. And I like Steve Ersegg. I am a fan of Steve Ersegg. I'm a fan of like every fighter on the roster though. So, but no, I, I'm a fan of Steve Ersegg. And... I score sometimes. I feel like I tend to score how I kind of expect the judges to score. So not really going off of damage and things like that. I'm just because the judges don't know what they're doing most of the time. I feel like personally, so like when I'm watching it, I'm like, ah, the judge is going to go Pantoja there. Let's go. You know, I think Pantoja's got that round. I think Pantoja's got this. And I do think Pantoja had good success early. Urseg came on and I thought it was a very, very close fight. And I was expecting a split decision. I have to rewatch guys. I have to rewatch because I'm hundred percent biased and I'm not technically scoring how they are likely to score. And I do understand that Ursig was doing damage with the elbows, the cuts, the blood. So I'm not saying that, oh, sitting here, like I got my pick right, Pantoja easily won. No, I have to go back and rewatch that fight. My uh, my friend thought Ursig got it. Um, everyone on social media pretty much thinks Ursig got it. My brother was telling me, he was like, bro, Ursig, Ursig won. He, but he expected the robbery. And that's one of those things we got to kind of expect. I don't know why everyone's so stunned that Pantoja won the close fight in Brazil. Also, one of my favorite fights of all time. Anybody else love that fight? I'm not, I'm trying not to be like very negative after this fight. Um, obviously I got my pick right, so. But like with the scoring and things like that, people are going crazy, just very angry and things like that. People mad at the Brazilian crowd and there's a lot to be mad about, but I think there's also a lot to be like, wow, this was an unbelievable show. And then you get that unbelievable main event. That's one of my favorite fights ever because I love fights where they incorporate all of MMA and the scrambling in this one between Urseg and Pantoja. Credit to Steve Urseg, man. Um, I know this 
um, was a guy that a lot of fans who watched the Versic fight, we knew he was very high level. I'm not really surprised that he was able to put on a show against a champion like this, but it is very impressive. It just shows how high a lot of people were on Steve Ursig because the dude had three fights in the UFC and not against like the top of the top competition. And then he fights the champion, Alessandre Pantoja. And the fight is razor close with a lot of people, a majority of people thinking that he won the fight. So 100% credit to Steve Ursig. It was an amazing performance from Steve Ursig. 100%. I think that he deserves credit for this performance. It is unfortunate that, you know, he is a loser in that fight. But, you know, the judges ended up going with Alessandre Pantoja. I do think um, the scrambling was a big part of the fight. I do think Pantoja beat him in the scrambles a lot of the times when they mattered, especially the fifth round. I know a lot of people are talking about Ursek potentially making a mistake in that fifth round, shooting takedowns on Alessandre Pantoja when he was having good success on the feet with his striking and cutting, doing damage. So here's my take on that. So I do agree that Ursig made a mistake shoot, shooting takedowns in the fifth round. But with that being said, I don't think he made a mistake shooting takedowns in the fight. This was not something he strictly did in the fifth round. He was trying to incorporate grappling a little bit earlier as well. Even scrambling heavy with Pantoja. I mean, that's obvious though, because when he gets taken down, he obviously has to scramble to get up. So, but he was initiating some scrambles. I wasn't too surprised. I was surprised when he was doing it live a little bit when he was first shooting takedowns. But then I was like, oh yeah, he said he was going to incorporate all MMA which I think is brilliant to do against Pantoja. And in, the reason to do that is because we've seen Pantoja when he gets taken down, like Oscar Askarov, and there's that other fight that's not coming to me, but um, that could potentially be a better way to beat him, being more, being not one-dimensional in a way. And I think he thought that was his way to victory. So I don't think it's a bad choice to try to use full MMA in the fight. But in the fifth round, I do think he should have stuck more to the simple striking. I think in the striking, that's where he had the advantage. I do think the blitz was giving him trouble. But when you get into the fifth round with that blitz, it's going to be a little less effective because of the gas tank and cardio. And I think Ursig should have stuck to more of his jab and more of just being a little safe in that round. But I know the mentality going into the fifth round, you want to kind of do something impressive. And I think he thought Pantoja was wearing down. So I understand why he did it. And I'm not trying to be the guy who's like, oh, in hindsight, he made this massive mistake and that cost him the title because it is unfortunate. It's definitely unfortunate. A lot of people think he won the fight anyway without that fifth round. Some people think he might might have won the fifth round because he did cut him as well. Great elbows from Ursek. The boxing was high level. I wasn't too surprised. I'm high on Steve Ursek. And I knew that fight... I didn't know. You never know. But I, I kind of expected it to be close. I picked Pantoja. I expected him to win, but I didn't even really know how because I know Ursa can grapple. I wasn't so confident that he'd get a rear naked choke. Um, I knew the Blitz would probably give Ursig some trouble, but Ursig showed up in the big occasion in Brazil. I also want to say about Alexandre Pantoja. I think Ursig may be the only guy in the division who can actually beat Pantoja. I'm actually pretty confident right now that Pantoja would defeat Mohamed Makayev. I also think this about Pantoja. I thought his cardio looked better in this fight than it did against Brandon Royval. And I think that goes back to Brandon Royval in his fifth round in the rematch against Pantoja was really sticking on those jabs. Now, Royval doesn't have power. Ursig 100% did way better than Royval did in that rematch fight. But I think that fifth round from Royval early, especially because Royval got taken down, doesn't have the takedown defense to be able to fight off Pantoja. I think Ursig does. I think he should have went to a little bit more for what Brandon Royval was doing, a little bit more high volume. I think because he was a little low volume in moments, that allowed more of the blitzes for Pantoja. It allowed him to kind of settle and recover a little bit. So maybe that was the cardio improvement that I saw because I don't expect a big cardio improvement, especially at his age. But with that being said, I thought it was a great performance from Pantoja as well. And an unbelievable fight from both. And what are your guys' thoughts on the scoring? I definitely think it's one of those ones that could have went either way. But maybe I'm a little too... Maybe I'm more close on this fight than other people are. Because I know a lot of people think Ursig won clearly. I will say this about the comments though. And a lot of people being toxic. Here's this one comment. All the homies hate Pantoja. Boring fighter just crotch sniffs 24-7. Now I know it's like trolling and stuff. And trying to get, you know, a big comment maybe i don't i just don't like that i i think sometimes people get too obsessed with this oh he's crotch sniffing or oh he's uh you know he's scared to fight and things like that pantoja was bringing that fight as well pantoja was running after him the takedowns he was going for you're allowed to initiate grappling without it being soft or anything like that in my personal opinion i don't think that pantoja's 
um, soft or a bad champion or a boring champion. And boring, I mean, the Royval fight was a little boring. This fight was the opposite of boring. One of my favorite fights of all time, and I don't like when fans don't give that respect. You know, it's MMA, it's not strictly striking, and we gotta give the respect to Pantoja. Let's get on to other fights on this card, but yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on the main event? I loved the fight. So in the co-main event, Jose Aldo defeats Jonathan Martinez. What a moment. In Brazil, I'm kind of disappointed he didn't retire. I know he looked good, so everyone's like, oh, he can stick around. Not to be like negative in this moment, but I don't think he beat Sean O'Malley. I don't think he's going to become champ. But I think the takeaway after this fight is Jonathan Martinez is a tricky guy to fight, um, but he was a good stylistic matchup in a way for Jose Aldo. And yeah, he beat Jonathan Martinez, a good win. That's a really solid win in the Bantamweight division. And he beat him clearly and convincingly, had a great moment in round three as well. In Brazil, unbelievable moment for Jose Aldo in his career. That's why I kind of wanted that retirement. But I do think he can stick around. I mean, he had a decent performance in hindsight against Murad Valachvili. So yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on the return of Jose Aldo? Seems like he'll probably stick around, but we'll see if they offer him a new contract. Bogdan Guskov defeats Vitor Petrino by first round submission. No, it's Anthony Smith, but seems like it was Bogdan Guskov. I mean, no, but Anthony Smith, man, Anthony Smith, that was surprising. Right before the fight, I was like, wait, I don't know why. I kind of feel like Anthony Smith might actually win. Like, maybe Petrino's not that good, but I'd kind of do that before every fight. Anthony Smith, uh, yeah, there's not really much to say. Vitor Petrino kind of just stuck his head in that guillotine when going for that big kind of slam takedown. I don't know what my takeaway is for that fight, but a big win for Anthony Smith. I mean, kind of a statement win, so I guess that's the takeaway. So, yeah, he does deserve credit, though, because a lot of people were, you know, bashing him and saying his career's over, and I didn't expect him to win this one. Uh, Michel Pereira versus Ihor Potieria. So, man, there's a lot to talk about with this. So, <laughs> it seems like uh, everyone thought on commentary and there was discussions about if that backflip was an illegal strike. If people didn't watch this fight, they're probably like, what is going on? Um, but they know when, you, when I say the name Michel Pereira that backflip might be in that same sentence. Michel Pereira, uh, unbelievable performance. He looks ridiculously good at middleweight. He looks extremely dangerous. He looks big as well. I was very impressed with that win. Um, but he does that backflip, and it seems like they were discussing, like, with Buffer and stuff, like, what they were going to rule the fight, whether it was an illegal strike that led to the finish and it should be a no contest. It seems like their conclusion was kind of like, nah, that was too epic. We'll, we'll let him get it. You know, like it was too great of a moment, like that backflip. And he has to be careful backflipping on fighters though. Cause one of these days he's going to knock someone out cold and then he's just not going to be able to be champion. Cause he just backflipped on you. Um, Michel Pereira though, great win. I think he's got like eight straight wins or something now, um, out of nowhere. So I was happy about that. That was a great moment on this card. Uh, Paul Craig, Loses to Kyle Bohayo. Man, this was disappointing for me as a Paul Craig enjoyer. Uh, it's kind of what I expected, though. Unfortunately, I think Bohayo is pretty good. He's got good jujitsu. I knew he would be able to kind of fight with the right game plan of not playing the grappling game with uh, Paul Craig and really, really using his striking advantage. I do think Paul looked pretty good on the feet in moments for Paul Craig. I know he's not a great striker, so I thought the body kick looked pretty nice, but obviously he's just not on the striking level of Kyle Bohayo, and he gets knocked out in the second round. A good win for Bohayo. Uh Jack Shore versus Joe Anderson Brito. I didn't like the stoppage of this fight. I understand why it was stopped, but uh, Jack Shore was moving on his leg quite well. Joe Anderson Brito, though, went out there with the game plan it seemed to destroy his leg and just be energetic and big and physical really makes that Jonathan Pierce fight look weird man Jonathan Pierce was doing very good against Joe Anderson Brito and then Brito catches him in that slick ninja choke people these fighters need to start spamming ninja chokes to me it looks like an unbelievably OP submission I love the ninja choke so yeah Joe Anderson Brito gets that uh, TKO by leg kick stoppage with the bloody Jack Shore leg which was crazy Carolina Kovalkiewicz unfortunately loses that winning streak that was a kind of fun storyline in my opinion uh and loses it to a uh, Yasmin Lucindo who's seen I think she's like 20 or something um yeah she's like my age like yeah I mean, very good win, to be honest, over a veteran. I know Carolina's 37, and, you know, it was kind of expected. I think Lucinda was, like, a big favorite, but that was a that was 
the performance was good. It's not just like she won or something by split decision. You know, it was a good performance. Elvis Brenner versus Mictabek Orobai. I don't know what my takeaway is for this fight. It's either Mictabek Orobai is amazing or he's garbage. There's no in-between. No, nah, they... The reality is, I think it's kind of more the in-between. I know he had a lot of hype going into this one. I uh, I like Mektabek Orobai. I like him a lot, but I don't think it was a great performance. Um, I thought Elvis Brenner looked off as well. That's kind of why I'm saying this about Orobai's performance. I know he looked good in moments, but I thought Brenner looked like he was like done in the second round. Um, and the reason why I criticize Orobai's performance is for that reason and also... His striking looked phenomenal. The power's insane, but he didn't stick to the striking. He just, the game plan seemed to just be takedown. It's like that, you know, he had to go to that takedown. It seemed he had trouble with the scrambles. Maybe it was just, you know, the hot Rio de Janeiro crowd and it seemed really hot in the arena. Maybe that's why he kind of slowed down, lost some scrambles. And the fight actually would have been a draw if he didn't get that. It probably would have been a draw if he didn't get that third round knockdown at the end, but... I was happy he got it. I was undefeated on the card at this point. But Nick the Beck Orobai versus Elvis Brenner, that was kind of my takeaway. It was a very weird fight. It was kind of a good fight, kind of a bad fight. They both could be really good or both could be not that good. But I'm interested in both of their careers. Uh, Joaquim Silva versus Dracar Close. Amazing fight. Yeah, this fight was really, really good. Uh, Joaquim Silva had that really good round three, but wasn't enough for a 10-8. I thought Close won the first two rounds as well, but they were... A little bit close uh but yeah it was that was a really good i liked that fight a lot that fight was intense too with the slam the guillotine escape mauricio hoofy versus jamie malarkey i'm not gonna go insane and say he's 100 percent the next conor mcgregor um i know dean thomas was saying he looks like conor it was kind of like shocking on commentary early but i was thinking the same thing i was like when i watch a lot of fighters especially when i watch fights where i expect the guy to get the ko i expected hoofy to ko jamie malarkey so when I watch fights like that, one of the things that I look for is how slick are you on the feet? And when I think of slick on the feet, what I'm picturing is kind of like a young Conor McGregor with that kind of karate style, especially I think pre-fight they said Hoofy's a karate stylist and I watch him on Contender Series. I was extremely impressed. I can't wait for his... Ne I can't wait. Uh, let me stop. I can't wait, but I I was very impressed and I, I'm very excited about his next fight. I really am. I thought he did look exactly like that young Conor McGregor. I don't know if he's a southpaw, but uh, the way he was standing, the way his arms were positioned, the range management, the timing, the slickness, the flashiness, um, he went for that crazy uh, sweep. Yeah, the Fighting Nerds team seems to be really good and uh, what a performance from Mauricio Hoofy. I think he deserves a lot of praise after that performance over Jamie Malarkey in a fight that he was expected to win but a fight where he really exceeded expectations. Dione Barboza defeats Ernesta Carasqueta. I think this fight was actually a robbery. I don't think it's egregious but I thought that Ernesta Carasqueta won unfortunately because I picked Barboza but because uh, round two, I, I hate when fighters just lay on their back and they get leg kicked and they're like, yeah, I'll chill here for two minutes. Um, that was kind of round two. And I think for that reason, it's a bad look. And even though Barboza, I believe, hurt Katasketa at the beginning of the second round, I think you got to go Katasketa for that round. And round three, she definitely won. Round one, Barboza looked really good, though. So weird fight. Ismael Bonfim with a decent performance over Vince Pichel. That's kind of my takeaway there. Alessandro Costa I thought looked really good against Kevin Borjas and that has me thinking that Alessandro Costa is quite good because he was able to win a round over Ursig as well. You must remember that round two I believe it was at UFC 295 which wasn't long ago and he was having some nice success against Amir Albazi. So he has those losses in his UFC career but he's clearly good. Um, the performance against Albazi was decent before he lost by knockout I think you know, he's shown some flaws, but I think he may be improving, and I love his team. He's got Alexa Grasso, Diego Lopez, and coached by Francisco Grasso. I think that team is kind of on the come up, and yeah, I think he I think he might be pretty good in the flyweight division. He's pretty big for flyweight as well. You know who else is big for flyweight? Steve Ursag. Crazy how big Steve Ursag is for flyweight. Yeah, so that's kind of my takeaways for this card. One of my main takeaways for Pantoja versus Ursag is that Pantoja really tries to he tries to break you Pantoja tries to break you mentally before you can break him physically. That's one of my takeaways about watching Pantoja. I've watched him a lot now in mean, his style. 
the way that he runs after you, even though he ha we have some doubts as a fan base about his cardio. I think we all do in the way he looks in some fights. And he looks sloppy, not a great striker, but he runs after you. He gives it, um, he gives it his all. And I think he's trying to break you mentally before you can really use your physical advantages, your striking advantages, um, your cardio advantage, you know what I mean? And um, it kind of worked again as well, because I do think Ursic had a lot of advantages in this matchup against Pantoja. And I know everyone's saying Ursic won, but I think Pantoja deserves his credit because he is the winner um, in his own right. I thought it was a great performance for both. I don't know if the stats are updated here, but nine takedowns from Pantoja, six attempts for Ursig, only able to get one. But Steve Ursig showed off his grappling. And I think Steve Ursig, they might do the rematch in Australia. I think Ursig is 100% high level. I think he may be the second best in the division. I know a lot of people are going to be saying he's the best in the division. So um, I don't necessarily think that he lost. I need to go back and rewatch. You know what I mean? Um, I don't really know what happened. I wasn't too surprised that Pantoja got it, but I feel for Ursig, and he seemed pretty sad in the moment, but he's a young fighter. He's going to be back, in my opinion, and I think he should go up the rankings after that performance 100% in this flyweight division, which isn't that good of a division. Um, these guys clearly stand out. And um, yeah, that's one of my takeaways. Unbelievable fight. Um, comment below your guys' thoughts on this card and this fight. I thought this card exceeded expectations massively, and I actually really enjoyed it. So yeah, it is 2 a.m. in Boston right now. I'm going to get to editing, uploading, and things like that. Um, but yeah, comment below your guys' thoughts if you guys would like to subscribe. Thank you, and thanks for watching this video.